What's going on everyone? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. The year of the custom bind continues. Today I wanted to talk about two custom binds that I recently had done um, that collect an entire run by one of uh, arguably my favorite writer of all time. We're going to talk about Green Lantern by Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp. Uh, a run that I know has divided very many people, specifically Morrison fans, um, and I think has you know, disagreed with a lot of Green Lantern fans. So we're going to talk about all of that. Um, I'll talk about my thoughts on the run, what I thought of it, the artwork, the writing, the plot in general, the idea in general, because there is a grand idea here. Um, and we'll dive into the custom bind a little bit, look at the binding, talk about why I split it up the way I did. Um, things like that. Before we dive into it, gotta quickly shout out the incredible organicpricebooks.com. With the promo code TC2, you get an extra $2 off your order. Great shipping, great customer service, great packaging, uh, great prices, amazing variety. Check them out, please. Um, you can use the promo code for every single one of your orders and save yourself the two bucks. Now, let's talk about Green Lantern Season 1 and 2 by Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp. Okay, Green Lantern by Graham Morrison, Liam Sharp. I bound it in two volumes. Um, this could easily fit into one. It's not that many issues, I think. I mean, the two seasons are 24, then you have Black Stars, which is three, and an annual in there. Tw so, you know, you could easily fit that into one. Um, a custom bind but uh, I wanted to make it a bit easier to read so I just split it into two and you got two seasons so it works out really nicely um, so but I guess before we get into this let's let's sort of talk about what's uh, what's been happening in, in the Green Lantern world so far while we appreciate the incredible artwork by uh, Mr. Liam Sharp so in the Green Lantern world we've had you know since the Jeff Johns run which sort of revitalized the the franchise along with Green Lantern Corps by Peter J. Tomasi um, you know, bringing in the various other core, all that stuff, we won't get into all the details. You know, after that, we had the Robert Venditti run in the New 52 leading into Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. We also had um, Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz over in the Green Lanterns title. Um, and then, you know, now we've got um, Grant Morrison's Green Lantern. And, you know, it feels like this isn't really even part of the continuity of the overall DC Green Lantern, if that makes sense in any way, shape, or form. This kind of feels like it just took place at some point, at some time, and now things have just moved on. Um, it's very weird. It's very weird. This this entire run, this entire idea is is a love letter to, you know, the Silver Age of Green Lantern, the, the history of Green Lantern as a character. Um, both in terms of the artwork and the writing. I know that was sort of the idea Graham Morrison and Liam Sharp had when they came, when they were writing this, when they were creating this uh, together. And, you know, it shows, it shows. And this is one of those books where, as, as I read the first season, um, it, it felt very odd to me. It's not what I was expecting. You know, I'm so used to Green Lantern being a, a way more action-oriented, more of a team book. Uh, more of Hal Jordan trying to redeem himself as a character and, and be a better person and mend relationships and mend fences with people. But um, this is, you know, Hal Jordan trying to be the best Green Lantern he can be. He's uh, he's the superstar. He's, you know, um, he's the Clint Eastwood uh, of the Green Lantern Corps. It's an epic story. Season one um, sort of deals with this character called Controller Mew. I won't get into too many details, don't want to spoil too much. This issue in particular, I believe it's issue 7, is spectacular. Um, it's sort of a, a prose comic issue, but really, really good, excellent stuff. Uh, incredible artwork by Liam Sharp. This next issue is a, sort of a throwback to, to the Neil Adams, Denny O'Neill stuff. So you get these really nice crossovers with a little bit of a twist every time, because it is Grant Morrison at the end of the day. And uh, Grant Morrison explores, you know, the various... Um, relationships of Hal Jordan, uh, the various histories of Hal Jordan, the other worlds and universes he's visited back in the Silver Age when uh, when it was more of a, you know, a very space copy solo adventure book. And, you know, I after a while, I really started to enjoy it, um, seeing the overall plot come together. I also realized it's something I've sort of been asking for is a, a modern take on Silver Age stories. Um, you know, with Grant Morrison, there's always that uh, that psychedelic twist. Um, 
that you know mind mind boggling twist um that's you know undeniable undeniable morrison factor um so there is that you here's the sort of the artwork from the black stars um issues this was by uh, zermanico on art not liam sharp liam sharp did the covers though uh, an, a spectacular mini and then jumping into season two liam sharp back on art duties liam sharp actually really started to get experimental in season two with his artwork um doing different various styles um some of it looked re- like super painted uh synthetic really really cool stuff you'll you'll see it here in a bit but i mean the detail is sensational um and and it it just tells the, it tells the story in a very very different way there are some you know relatively significant changes that occur in season two um in terms of the the feel of the book i mean it's really focused on hal jordan you do get to see other green lanterns uh come in uh, you get to see you know lantern Rikaktaro. i believe that's his name um, i forget the lantern's name whose head is a volcano but fantastic character um trilla true is a great green lantern that re- uh, makes continuous appearances within this uh within the two seasons so i really enjoyed seeing you know some other green lanterns come in and and jump in once in a while there are of course a multiverse of characters that are explored within this run because it's grant morrison doing grant morrison things there are huge stories happening here i mean if there weren't events like death metal happening and and metal and year of the villain i mean this would be this would these are huge events that take place within this series so um i thoroughly enjoyed that at the end of the day yes it does feel like this just sort of happened and it doesn't really matter but maybe someday someone will reference them um i'm really glad i got this bound i really enjoy the series now talking about it makes me want to reread it it's such a weird bizarre story um that if you're in the right mindset you know takes you on a really fun adventure this is sort of the jack kirby inspired issue again liam sharp doing everything pencils inks colors uh absolutely incredible absolutely incredible um really wacky story in this again i don't want to spoil too much because this is season two you know sort of midway through i don't think the artwork spoils enough because the, the dialogue does tell a lot of the story but look at the variation in art style here it's incredible yeah it's so good it's such a love letter to classic classic green lantern stuff um and uh i'm hoping that one day we get to see an absolute edition for it hopefully an omnibus it would be very very nice but uh i don't know what dc's plans are we'll see I would love to see an absolute. I think Liam Sharp's artwork deserves it. Uh, there are some very fascinating ideas explored in this book as well. They're sort of hidden within um, within the pages. They're just side notes, you know, very interesting one-liners that get thrown out, sort of exploring a character like Hal Jordan or a character like Trilla True. Um, very interesting stuff. Uh, you get to see a, a lot of characters from Hal's past. So um, it's 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 an amazing this is one of the best pages the the transition in artwork here is so incredible um, and the way the story takes a turn afterwards it's so so good but anyway let me know what you thought of Grant Morrison's Green Lantern run I know it's very polarizing for some people so be sure to let us know down in the comments below thank you all very much for tuning in this was Mike from the hardcover comic until next time as always you stay classy internet